In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this really simple and quick hinging jig in order to um, route, route mortises for the hinges I'm using on a new door jam as well as new French doors. This is kind of um, a part of a larger project, which I will be posting on the channel if you're interested in learning how to make jams and um, exterior French doors like this. But I couldn't find a great video to answer some of the questions I had myself on how to do this process. So I decided to um, designate an entire video to that. The, the um, jig I came up with actually was, was simpler than I thought it was going to be. So that is what this is going to entail. So I'm starting with the jam I made in the shop. It's nothing special. It's just going to hold those French doors. And then I have a set of ball bearing style hinges. This is not a sponsored post. I'm not even necessarily recommending these yet because I haven't installed the door. But so far, I like the way that they work. So that is where we're starting. Um, I have the doors set in the jam. I made these doors oversized so I could cut the reveal after I mounted the hinges. So that's why you notice the reveal's a little uneven. But like I said, that's what I'm starting with for this project. So exterior doors or doors even in your home are going to be proud of the jams a little bit so the hinges don't hit the molding. So I'm showing you two examples um, of exterior doors and how those hinges are proud. I lined up the hinges on my frame mimicking the top and bottom basically they sit below where um just a little below where the bottom rail and the top rail are and then i had 66.5 inches in between that in order to space out my other two hinges perfectly i subtracted the thickness of the hinge which is four and four eight inches i divided that by the compartments I was going to have, which is three, I got 19.5, so I knew I could space those perfectly 19.5 apart. That's kind of how you break up spaces if you have to account for the thickness of something. So to start this jig, I'm cutting down a scrap piece of ply. I'm going to have an eighth inch reveal on the top and the bottoms of these doors. So I accounted for that and I subtracted a quarter of an inch from my final height. I put little eighth inch shims. I had some scrap poplar around the shop, which was perfect eighth inch shims on either edge. So it fits right inside that jam perfectly. Now I'm going to rip this down to two inches so that it fits in my jam. The style jam I'm making where are the stops are already in there. I'm going to put some kerf silicone bulb weather stripping in there. So I wanted this to fit inside that frame. Your door might be a little different, which is why I'm going through all these steps. You can see the reasons I chose this process you might have to adjust things a little bit. But that was basically ripped down to two inches. You saw the length in the previous uh, part of the video. And then I just cut a little scrap piece, which is about um, an, a two and a quarter inches for the top. I'll come back to that a little bit later. I transferred the marks of the hinges onto this jig, and then I'm going to remove the material for the hinges on the radial arm saw. This will give me a nice clean cut. My router bearing bit can follow these recesses in the jig really well. Um, there's You could route these out if you want to. You can hand cut these out. You could cut these on the table saw. For something like this in my shop, the radial arm saw is the easiest way to do it. So I remove all the material and make sure that hinge fits and then I could go down the line. Now where these are set up is you saw I had it lined up on the frame but basically what's important is getting all of these hinges accurate through all the pieces. Once all the glasses in these doors are going to be quite heavy which is why I decided to play it safe and do four hinges on this on this door. So then once I had those out I could put them in place. I'm marking what the router is going to have, um, using a palm router, it will have a plexiglass bottom on it. So I, that plexiglass bottom will have to clear this jig. So that's why you see quite large spaces over top of where I cut out those mortise um, recessed spots for the router. And then I just have a scrap piece of wood I have on the inside clamped in place so that I could screw these top portions, which I'm, I'm referring to as a fence, into just the middle part of that jig. So you can see that outer piece of ply is basically a spacer. So I can line this perfectly on the top very easily. And I'm just going to screw it into that middle portion. By doing this, I make it double sided so I could 
mount it to the right side of the jam and route those marks, move it over to the left side, and then the same exact thing with the doors. So that was what's really important with this. Not necessarily where those hinges are, but making sure that on all the parts you're putting on them on, they're lined up the same way. The bit I'm using for this is a white side bit. Once again, not sponsored, but I like these bits that ship quickly on Amazon. They're made in America. I've never had a problem with these bits. I have a Freud bit, which also works quite well, but it was too tall for this jig. I will actually use this a little bit later in the video. This smaller bit, I think this was a three inch cutting bit. You can see I could cut, because you're only going about, I think it was like three sixteenths of an inch is the thickness of the hinge. So I needed that smaller bit. So that patterning bit, I of the router bits I use in the shop, those I use probably the most, so I didn't mind ordering one. So then I just clamped this jig into place. I made sure the plywood was flush with the top of the jam. And then now you can see why I have these pieces offset so that this um, fence on the, the router can fit in between those sheets of ply. And I could just go through and route this out. I'm checking to make sure I have the bit at the right depth and I could go through and route this out. Now, if you, it's a little bit harder to route this on edge like this. If you don't have your, your um, jams all glued into place yet, you could take it apart and route it on a table. It's a little bit easier. Or you can turn this on edge and route them that way. That will work as well. But for this, it was easy enough for me to put enough pressure on this to not move it around, and it worked well. One of the um, uh, recesses I cut was a little too wide so I just put two pieces of electrical tape on the edge as a shim and that worked out perfectly you'll notice that red tape in the whole video because I obviously kept it there for all of the hinge cuts and that just shimmed it out enough so the fact that I cut it a little oversized um, wasn't that big of a deal and then this is the beauty of it. I can unclamp it from one side, move it to the other side, clamp everything in place, and do the exact same thing. Um, route all of those grooves, and um, now I, I'm assured that they are all perfectly aligned. So zoomed out a little bit, you can see the process. This was very quick. I was nervous about this part of the project because um, I had done quite a bit of reading and this is where you can easily mess up a project, especially something that is solid wood that isn't going to be painted, but um, it actually turned out quite well. And then obviously the router is going to leave your edges rounded. I've There's many ways, I guess, to go about doing this but I just used a chisel to quickly remove that material. You could see those hinges fit perfectly in place. Um, I don't film it, but obviously I attach those with their screws. So then once my doors were back in place, you can see where those hinges on the jams are. I roughly transferred some marks to the door just so I routed them on the right side. So I had to make a simple change to the jig in order to do the doors. I'm taking the spacer off the edge and I'm putting another fence on the edge. So it's just another scrap piece of ply that I attach to the edge and that will hook on the edge of the door so I know that it's lined up perfectly. Those were the marks I put on the door. Something I, I would do in my shop is route these on the wrong side. So I was just using those, those pencil marks as a reference guide. You can see that now this snaps onto the edge of the door. So I know that this will be perfectly aligned with the jam. The fence sits now on that top side of the door. I could clamp it in place. Once again, make sure that ply is, is in line with the door. And then you could see what I was talking about, why it's a little easier to route these if everything's facing up vertically because you're just applying pressure down and then it was the exact same thing. I could go through all of these and just route them. It's the same setup with the router. You're just following along that, that um, plywood frame. So that is basically what that looks like. I can go down the whole thing and get perfect, perfect mortises. Once again, I could take off the jig. Everything just clamps in place. And then for these, once again, squaring up the corners, really simple with a chisel. It's, it's a very small piece of material you're removing. So those are squared and you can see that the hinge fits in there perfectly. I have just about the exact um, amount of hinge sticking out from the face of the door so I can clear the moldings I'm going to be putting on there. It's just about, it looks like it's three eighths of an inch, but um, that's just the camera skewing the angle. It's more like five sixteenths. 
And then um, I don't really have a lot of gadgets in the shop, but this hinge bit works really well to center screws and hinges. You can easily mess up this whole process by mounting these hinges wrong. So it has a little nipple on the end, which, which follows the indent and the hinge. It gives you perfectly centered bit, uh, uh, pre-drilled holes for that hinge to go in. I think I bought that at Lowe's quite a few years ago. I, the, I think they might be more now, but when I got it, it was under $10. And that's what all of my hinges look like on the one door. I can take this out of my vise and then mount it in the frame, make sure everything matches up. You can see I just propped it up. It's easier to work on all of this sort of stuff while it's laying on the floor and just make sure the whole thing closes. You can see the screws are too long for the jam I have. Once it's in place, I'll be happy that those screws are longer. Now the second door glued up a little out of square. So my, my fence was a little bit too small. I had these little scrap pieces of shim in the shop. I put a shim on either end so that I could fit it on, on the piece. And then it was the exact same process. If you have to do that, just make sure you shim both sides. If you only shim one side, it will be a little off. And then it was the exact same process for that side of the door. You can see I have everything in place. Like I said, I was really happy with how this turned out. The next part of this process is putting the reveal around where the two doors meet, as well as the top and the bottom. For this video, this is going to be outside the scope of this video. I just wanted it to be a video on how to do these hinges with the jig I made. So I'm gonna go through this process real quickly just so you can see the final, uh, final piece. Like I said, if you're interested in how to make these doors and the whole process, I'll be uploading this French door build probably starting next week. So basically I just made a straight edge on top and bottom and um, I used a piece of plywood with that longer pattern cutting bit in order to even out both of my edges. Like I said, I'm going for about an eighth inch reveal. So since these were mounted in there a little crooked, you could see I'm taking off more material in some parts than others, but this was a very simple process. I just put that piece of scrap ply on there um, in order to follow follow the, the line. And then once I'm about halfway down the door, I could actually remove the ply because the bearing will now follow the straight edge of the door and finish those pieces up. Same thing for the middle of the door, which isn't in this video, but I trimmed that as well. There's more like a 3 16th of a groove in the middle versus an eighth, because this stuff will swell as soon as um, the summertime hits. And that is what that basically looks like. So that was the process, like I said. So um, had never really done exterior doors like this before. The process for interior doors is gonna be very similar, but I was really happy with how this one turned out.